One of my favorite characters in the Old Testament is Elisha. He was the one who followed in the footsteps of the prophet Elijah. And so we're going to be sharing some ideas this afternoon about Elisha and his ministry and how he followed the prophet Elijah. And I'm indebted this afternoon to Pastor John Gardner of the Zion Church, Mount Zion Church in Howick for many of the ideas that I'm sharing with you this afternoon. But before we do anything, let's ask the Holy Spirit to open up the scripture for us this afternoon and to, and to give us new revelations as we look at Elijah and Elisha. Yes, Father, we do pray that your word will speak to us this afternoon. We do pray that your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, will enlighten us and will give us new understandings and new revelations. Father, I'm just so grateful once again to be able to share Scripture with my viewers and to be able to, in the name of Jesus, bring them the good news of the gospel. Will you bless this time, Lord, in Jesus' name? Amen. I think we need to begin where Elisha received the call from Elijah, because this is an important beginning for Elisha. And in 1 Kings 19:19, 19, 19, it says this, Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the twelfth pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Now that is significant. He threw his cloak around him. We're going to come back to that in, in more detail a little bit later. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah, saying, Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and then I will come with you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? Then in verse 21 it says, So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen and slaughtered them. He burned the plowing equipment to cook the meat and gave it to the people, and they ate. Then he set out to follow Elijah and become his servant. So significant, I think, that Elisha, in a sense, burnt his bridges. He went back, said goodbye to his family and his father, killed the ox oxen, and burnt the wood from the plows, and have a, had a party with his friends. And so, in a sense, Elisha was saying to his friends and his family, Listen, guys, I'm not coming back. I'm going to follow Elijah, and I'm going to learn from him, and I'm going to be his apprentice, as it were. As surely as the Lord lives, said Elisha, and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel, Jericho, and Jordan. Even the wise prophets said to Elisha when he was following Elijah on that particular day, Elisha, we don't think it's a good idea for you to be following Elijah because he's going to be taken from us today. So they prophesied what was going to happen. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? But Elisha refused. He resolved simply to become stronger. And you see, we know that three times Elisha asked Elijah to take him with him wherever he was going. And on each occasion, Elijah said to him, it's better if you stay here. And then Elisha said to him, I am not going to stay. As surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, I will not leave you. And so he followed him down to Bethel, he followed him down to Jericho, and he followed him down to the Jordan. Elijah had what is needed to go on. And he knew that he needed to follow Elijah if he was going to get the full package, as it were. And you know, I'm reminded of many years ago, there was a, a wonderful minister in East London at the Stirling Presbyterian Church there called Kingsley Dale. 
Kingsley went on to have a magnificent ministry and then unfortunately died some years ago. And he was going to go to a new ministry in Johannesburg. And his faithful congregation were really, really desperately disappointed in the man because he was leaving. And I remember that I was invited to go and preach at Sterling Presbyterian Church on a particular Sunday. And I preached on the subject of John 6. Listen to what it says in John 6 from verse 64 and 60s up to 69. Jesus had known from the beginning which of them did not believe and who would betray him. He went on to say, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled them. From this time, many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. And then he said to his disciples, his close disciples, You do not want to leave me too, do you? And Simon Peter, the Simon Peter, as we've said before, foot in the mouth, Simon Peter said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. Each one of us, whether we like it or not, is going to have our faith tested. And more and more in these times, you're going to have your faith tested. And the key to all that we do in the name of Jesus is to hang in and not question your faith. You see, because that's what the evil one wants you to do. He wants you to question your faith. He wants you to question the Messiahship of Jesus. He wants you to question the man God and the God man Jesus. And you know, there are two very worrying things, which I know I've mentioned before, but in the context of Elisha, it's worth remembering. First of all, so many people that we meet nowadays will tell you this. I'm a Christian, you know, but I don't go to church anymore. And the second thing we hear a lot of is people saying, I used to be a serious churchgoer, but now it's easier for me to sit in my lounge and watch something online, some church service online. You see, when people say that I don't go to church anymore, although I'm a Christian, it's the equivalent of saying, you know, I'm an incredibly keen golfer, but I haven't played for 20 years. Or, I love going shopping for my wife. I really do enjoy going to the supermarket, but I haven't been to the supermarket for 20 years. That's how ridiculous it is for people to say, I'm a Christian, you know, but I don't come to church anymore. Why are we losing so many people when Jesus warned us? He said there's going to be a falling away. And he said people will only want you to tickle their ears and allow them to hear what they want to hear. So when we preach a hard message as ministers of the gospel, we mustn't be surprised that people react negatively. People only want to hear good things. They only want to hear what tickles their ears. Slowly but surely, people are giving up their faith. As Pastor John Gardner said in his sermon on this topic, those who had get up and go have lost their get up and go and left. That's the tragedy. And as we heard in the beginning today, Elisha asked if he could go back when he had burnt his plowing equipment and his oxen and had a party with his friends. What was he doing? I suggested this right at the very beginning. He was burning his bridges. As that lovely spiritual song says, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. No turning back, no turning back. Well, I remember one of my set work books just after the Rinderpest when I was studying. It was called Stages of Faith by one James Fowler, in which he discusses six stages of increasing faith, which is exactly what we need as Christians. 
We cannot stay as we are for the rest of our lives. In this book, he actually gets to stage three out of six, and he suggests that this is a teenage form of faith. And he makes a devastating claim. He says the vast majority of Christians remain at stage three of their faith. And he describes as it as being that we have a kind of a guru in every aspect of life. We have the chairman of the tennis club. We look up to him. We have the chairman of the golf club. We look up to him. We have the chairman of the school committee. We look up to him. And when we go into church, we have the pastor. And we look up to him for the hour or so that we are in church. And what he says we need to do at the end of every stage of faith, we need to burn the bridge between that stage and the next. There is no turning back once we are in Christ Jesus. Now, there is no plan B. You see, the only plan is the Jesus plan. Those of us who are in the full-time ministry need to hear this. And many of us have fallen into this trap of saying, you know what? I think I'd rather go and drive a bus. Or I'd rather go and deliver post. There is no plan. Once you're called into the ministry, and I am a victim of this myself, even those who are in part-time ministries need to hear this. When we are not being affirmed by people in our faith, that's when we need to continue going. Don't listen to the naysayers. The Lord allows the naysayers to speak into our lives so that we can become stronger as ministers and as Christians. Just like Elisha, we ordinary Christians need to learn and relearn something. We will never be able to live as Christians in this life without realizing what Jesus said to his disciples in John 15, 5. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you will bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Elisha asked Elijah for twice as much of his spirit. And Elijah said that was a difficult request. Elijah, by the way, did 28 miracles and prophecies. I beg your pardon. Let me rephrase that. Elijah did 14 miracles and prophecies. And Elisha, when he received the mantle, which we're going to look at in a moment, did 28 miracles and prophecies. Exactly double the amount. If you look at two kings, you will see miracles like parting of the Jordan, the healing of the waters, the filling of the valley with water, the miracle of the vessels and oil, and the resurrection of the Shunammite son. And even the resurrection of a man who was laid on Elisha's body when he's dead. The important thing to remember is that not one of these miracles was in Elisha's power. His was not by night, more by power, but by the Spirit, says the Lord. You see, I can personally testify about this. We begin to think that we've kind of arrived in the ministry and that we can begin to do it all by ourselves. And that's when the Lord begins to say, no, 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 you can do nothing without me. There is no power in the church but resurrection power. And that was only after Christ's resurrection that he told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem for power to come on high. So that we know we most of us, we started with a bang as Christians. Everything seemed to go right. We prayed for parking and we got parking. We prayed for keys to be found and they were found. We prayed for rings to be found which were lost and we found the rings. Many of us can testify to how well things went in the early days of our Christianity. But the more we have matured, the more we have got into Christ, the more we've realized that this is not a walk in the park. Philippians 3.10 says, 
I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. And let's just end by reminding ourselves of what happened when Elijah said to Elisha, if you see me being taken up into the air in the fiery chariot, you will receive my mantle. And we know that Elisha stood and watched Elijah going up in the fiery chariot and the mantle fell down and he used the mantle to strike the river Jordan and it parted. And so in a sense, you see, Elijah was taking his ministry and passing it on to Elisha. And as I said, twice as many as Elijah performed, these did Elisha perform. And so my brothers and sisters, let me encourage you. Let me encourage you to remain firm in your faith. Let me encourage you to enjoy your ministry and to put up with the barbs, to put up with the criticisms, to put up with the naysayers, because that is Christ strengthening you and allowing you to operate in his strength. And more importantly, as Elijah passed his mantle over to Elisha, so I pray that you too will have the opportunity and the privilege of handing your ministry over to somebody else. That you will be an encouragement. That you will encourage somebody to say, I want to do these things for Jesus in the same way that Elisha said of Elijah. Father, thank you once again. Thank you for our ministries. Thank you for our witness. Thank you for our testimony. And we pray that each one of us, Lord, as Christians, as ambassadors for Jesus Christ, will have a powerful testimony as you work through us and in us to bring good news to the poor. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.